Hey there, Sharon Horn Nelson here. Welcome to day 1,789 of What You Up To Now, documenting the journey. Originally, as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business, and then uh, the pandemic and all the craziness of that, I decided I was going to go back and forth. And I was I've kind of always done that most of my, well, not online. I didn't, of course, be online until the internet existed. And then I didn't even join that till in 2017, 2017, following my divorce, I just said, hmm, what am I going to do? I need to do something. And so I decided I would investigate. I was curious. I'd always been curious about the internet as a, an engineer and a pretty analytical person by nature and by education. I had, of course, played on the internet as a user, but I'd never thought about it with respect to business or marketing or anything like that. And so in 2017, after we divested our, you know, split up all the assets following the divorce, I was like, mm, I could retire and travel, but my eyesight had started to fail already. And I was like, mm, I, and that's, I actually really should have done it back then. <laughs> I just got back from a, a pretty long trip and realized that it's not as fun when everything is fuzzy and, and, and you really can't see much. I mean, some things are still pretty, but, um, and I'm very grateful and very thankful that I'm not a hundred percent totally blind, but, uh, it's just not the same. I don't drive these days. It's been a, several years. So <clears throat> traveling and the, the fun of traveling, I should have taken advantage of before my eyes really went tanked. So <clears throat> what did I share for content today? Every day I share two pieces of content and then I document my journey in this segment. And I do that primarily because I do have poor vision and I can take notes and things, but I can't read them without my giant magnifying glass. And I don't even know where that is today because I only have a little magnifying glass and I got spoiled on vacation using the giant magnifying glass because it makes it a lot easier to see things. I'm going to have to get a one of those ones like in the Santa Claus movies <laughs> where they use the giant eye reader thing. That would be fun to have one of those. So today our idiom for supersize your business was the long arm of coincidence. Now, I don't have very long arms, but it's fun to think if I did have long arms, what would I do? Uh, and I don't think I've ever, I've definitely never used this idiom. And I don't think that I've heard it before. I think it was a new one for me. It basically means that there's a broad and far reaching influence and power of coincidence. So I thought it would be interesting to look up what are the most common coincidences. And I was curious to find that I personally in my lifetime experienced all of these different most common types of coincidence. So I guess that would put me in the top 5% of people that have had one or more. And then I don't know how many percentage of people have had all of them. I think that might be an interesting survey to ask or a poll to ask on social media. So what are the most common ones? Sharing a birthday with somebody. I think many of us know, and especially with social media, it's easy to go online and find all the people you happen to have a common birthday with. The second one, and there's 11% of the people have a common birthday. I think they just statistically divided one divided by 365 and came up with the statistical percentage of that. I don't know. Anyway, the second one is connection with uh, involving books, TV, radio, or the news. Now, with social media and all the different platforms and things, I have got to believe that this percentage has gone way, way up. But it was uh, 10% according to the study that I found. The third one is a vacation-related experience where there's a coincidence. Uh, I can think of so many stories of that. We were in Disney, and we ran into my son's first-grade teacher because we were in the same uh, show that she was in. And, you know, it was Christmas vacation. Yeah, a lot of people go on Christmas vacation from Disney. But there's millions of people there. What's the probability that we would run into her? Number four, and that's a 6.1% of people. The fourth one is meeting people in transit. So uh, coincidentally running into your ex-girlfriend or boyfriend or person, primary, um, or running into somebody that you went to school with or grade school or high school with when you're on a bus or on a train or on a plane or something. And number five, something related to marriage or the in-laws or something, some coincidence involving that. That's 5.3%. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Then I thought, wow, I can think of stories and examples of all of this in my life. Our questions for, I'm asking two questions a day for the BU 365 day challenge for the month of December, kind of to give us a cool down period to finish off the challenge. You know, we're on day 351 
of the 365 day challenge. There's not much left, right? Only, uh, what, for a couple weeks. So <clears throat> we want, I wanted to make sure December, number one, I was traveling. Number two, it's a super duper busy, stressful month for a lot of us getting ready for the holidays, finishing off the year, things like that. And I work and uh, am involved with a lot of business owners. And so the end of the year is usually a busy time of year for us. So our questions were number one, do you believe in coincidence? Obviously my answer to that is yes. And number two, uh, what if there were no hypothetical questions? How would that impact your life or how would that impact do you think the world? I think that I have to think about that once more today because I've never asked myself that before. Uh, but I can think of a whole lot of nights that I would have gotten more sleep in certain corporate jobs when I didn't have to figure out what if scenarios and things. However, I think there's value in asking ourselves, if I do this, what are the consequences? What are the possible outcomes? And knowing what those are before we jump headfirst into certain things. Now, I don't think that we do analysis paralysis and get frozen and not make any choices or decisions. But I do think it makes sense to think about the ramifications of the things we say, the things we do, the choices we make, etc. And usually we don't think about them until we've made a choice and then it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. And then we're like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I wouldn't have said that. So those are our pieces of content today. I have a ton of Christmas preparation to do. I just got home uh, yesterday, God, day before yesterday, night before yesterday. And so Christmas needs to be done. Presents need to be wrapped. Baking needs to get done and all kinds of other personal things as I get ready for the holidays and wrap up business for this year. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow.